gonna do the gram stain. The gram stain is one of the most important stains to clinical microbiology. If a doctor suspects you have a particular infection, he's gonna to wanna to prescribe specific antibiotics for that particular infection. Um, we have all heard of antibiotic resistance. Um, antibiotics resistance is often due to the fact that we indiscriminately use antibiotics when not necessary. The other thing that you're going to be learning is there's two main categories of bacteria. There's what's called gram-positive bacteria and gram-negative bacteria. Gram-positive bacteria have a thick wall and are sometimes I would say a little bit easier to kill with antibiotics. Gram-negative bacteria have a different wall. They have a thinner wall but they have an extra layer of um, lipid around it that protects them. So gram-negative infections are resistant to, naturally resistant to things like penicillin. So a doctor would want to know if you have a gram-negative infection or a gram-positive infection before um, prescribing an antibiotic because he doesn't want to put you on a penicillin and then find out you have E. coli and it's not going to kill it because E. coli is a gram-negative bacteria. So this is really, really an important one. So a doctor could take a swab from, say, a person's throat or from, you know, have sputum or something like that, and he can send a culture to the lab, and in less than an hour, they would know if the infection was gram-positive or gram-negative. That right there is really important in making sure that you treat the patient accurately and quickly, rather than just putting them on some type of antibiotic that may or may not work, okay? So we're gonna do the gram stain. So once again, before you do the gram stain, you have to prepare a smear and fix it. So in this lab, we'll have several different bacteria that we're going to use. Some will be gram positive, some will be gram negative. They'll have different shapes, different morphologies, they'll have different arrangements. We're going to build on what we've been learning, okay? Now we're going to add to that by seeing if it's gram positive or gram negative. So for this procedure, we'd have our slides, and I'm just doing one right now, but you may have three. <laughs> Ooh, I'm fogging up. Um, I just have one right now, but you may have three um, different slides depending on the number of bacteria that you do. Okay, once again, it's perfectly fine to use several slides rather than trying to put them all, all on one. I would recommend never putting more than two on a slide because when you go to put it on the microscope, you end up with one that doesn't quite fit and you can't get the microscope stage to move properly. So put them on, each on their own single um, slide if you feel, feel like it's necessary. Okay, so now we're going to have four different um, bottles that we're going to use. We're going to have what's called a primary stain, which is the first stain that you put on. It's going to stain everything regardless of what it is. Our primary stain is crystal violet, just the same one that we used in that simple staining procedure. Then you're going to have um, another step where you're going to add what's called a mordant. The mordant in this case is grams iodine or an iodine. Basically it doesn't break down in the sun. Iodine is used to make the stain penetrate the wall and stick in there. Now if a cell is gram positive, I said that it has several layers, it has a thick wall. And what it is, it has several layers of peptidoglycan. If it's gram negative, it has one layer and then it has the uh, lipid layer on the outside. What happens is if it is a gram positive cell, then the iodine will complex with the crystal violet forming a crystal, okay, when you dry it out. What happens is that sticks within the wall. So if it's a gram positive cell, these two will stay in there and you will remain with a purple cell when you decolorize. If it's gram negative, what happens is that lipid layer kept the iodine from getting in there and forming the complex so it's going to wash off. So when you use this next step, the um, alcohol, it'll wash off. And then you're going to counter stain with what's called safranin, which is a red stain. Okay, it's going to make a cell look pink. So any cell that's gram positive will remain purple because it complexed with, complexed with the iodine, doesn't decolorize with the alcohol, remains purple. If it's gram negative, the alcohol washes off the purple and the because the iodine can't stick and you end up with a pink cell okay after this step if it was gram negative it would be white clear okay and you add the pink is what's called a counter stain so that you could at least see it 
Okay, you could skip the counter stain, but then you'd have a colorless cell, which once again would defeat our purpose because our idea is to see the color, to be able to see it. Because now in the end of it, you'll have a gram positive versus a gram negative cell. You'll still be able to observe shape, morphology, uh, uh, morphology and arrangement. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do these stains. Just like our previous one, very similar. We have our staining tray. You're going to take the primary stain, flood your slide like we did before. Okay, you're going to wait your minute. Once again, I'm not going to stand here for a minute waiting. We will pretend it has been 60 seconds. Between every step, always rinse with water. Okay, so we're going to rinse off the purple. Okay, remember the back side has writing on it, so I want to be careful not to, to get alcohol on that side. Now we're going to do the Graham's iodine. Um, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to flood it, but this time it's not going to stay as long. About 15, 20 seconds is good enough for the iodine. Okay, so that'll sit. You're going to rinse it off. So if it's a gram positive cell, you're going to have this core complex forming between these two. Now the way the distinguishing part of it is going to be the alcohol. This is called a decolorizer. A decolorizer is not set on there and left. What you do is you just drip it on there. And do you see the purple coming off the bottom? You just keep doing that until it starts to run clear. As soon as it starts to run clear, stop using the alcohol and rinse it off immediately. Okay? You need to stop the decolorizing. This is the step that you're going to screw up the most. I'm not saying you're going to screw it up, but it is messed up the most. What happens with the decolorizer are two things. Either you leave it on too long and gram positive cells will end up looking gram negative, or you don't leave it on long enough and you have gram negative that look gram positive. Okay? So the decolorizing is the one step that's probably the, the one that you need to be really accurate with. So like I said, you don't set it on there for a minute. You drip it, so there's no time period. You just drip it until it starts to run clear and then immediately rinsing with water. Now we can put the counter stain on, which is the saffronin. Let it sit for that minute. Okay, now we're going to rinse it off. Now, remember how we put the marker on the back? Gee, I don't know if you can tell, but some of my markers come off. This step right here with alcohol will rinse off Sharpie. So being really careful, somehow I got some of it on the back. Not to get the alcohol on the back because you're going to lose your circle and you're going to lose your label. Then you end up with a slide that you can't know what it, don't know what it is. Now when you put it under the microscope and you know that, say, Staph aureus should be uh, um, a uh, round-shaped bacteria in clusters, you might be able to tell what it is by looking at it. So what we're going to do, so be careful not to get the back too much alcohol on the back. We're going to dab it just like we did last time. Don't rub it off because you've worked so hard at doing this stain. You had to make a smear, which had to sit for like 10, 15 minutes to dry. Then you went through the staining procedure. You don't want to have to start over. So don't, don't wipe it off. Be patient. Please be patient. The more patient you are in microbiology, the better off you're going to be. Now we can just let that dry like we've done before while we go get our microscope. Another thing that I want to mention is flames and microscopes don't go together. So when you are preparing to do a stain, I don't want you to take your microscope out of the cabinet until after you finish the staining procedure because you don't want to set the microscope cord on fire with a flame or something like that.